This is one of sport's great proving grounds, a gateway to glory where heroes are made. It's absolutely first class. 30 tournaments spanning 19 countries. It's a 10-month campaign to determine the very brightest prospects in golf. He hasn't, has he? He hasn't, has he? Oh, my goodness. What a way to do it. Along the way, a chance for the class of 2023 to expand horizons and sample life on tour. <laughs> Always nice to experience new cultures. Yeah, I love that noise. Cheers, <laughs> boy. Enjoy. Finish the season in the top 20 on the road to Mallorca rankings and secure a golden ticket to the DP World Tour. That's the dream shared by all who compete on the Challenge Tour. We've seen some incredible performances on the Challenge Tour this season, but last week we witnessed arguably the most impressive. The amateur Martin Couvre, the 20-year-old from France, has done it. Just the seventh amateur winner on the Challenge Tour and the first since Julian Brune in 2012. Yes, a simply sensational victory. And for young Martin Couvre, the sky is now the limit. It's amazing for me to, to win last week with my caddy. It's, it's very amazing, there. so I'm very happy to win the tournament at the end of this year. It's, it's very nice. It's very, very incredible for me because I don't start very, very well my season on the Challenge Tour and I don't have a lot of points before the, the last tournament. And with this win, it's, it's amazing. Uh, I make some points and it's a new goal now so for, for the end of this season. The win has certainly opened new doors for the Frenchman. It's also led to him making a rather important decision about his playing future. With the French Federation, we speak a lot uh, after the tournament to talk about if I turn pro or if I stay amateur to play the World Amateur Team Championship. And the decision was to turn pro and play all of the Challenge Pro events to, to make some points and maybe play on the DP World Tour next year. What an incredible story that would be. Kouvre, though, is not the only one targeting a spot inside the top 20 come season's end. Another hopeful is Jordan Gumberg. The American has had to work hard for his place on the rankings, taking every opportunity that's come his way. I was playing on invites before Ireland. That was just a life-changing week, really. Um, having a Monday qualifier there and, uh, with two spots, it was obviously not a guarantee to get in. And, some great players in that qualifier and just had a really, really solid day of golf and ended up getting in the playoff. So kind of started the week off with a little bit of drama and I figured, hey, I'm in the event. I got as good a chance as anybody and go out and play solid golf four rounds. And luckily we were kind of there on Sunday playing in the final group with uh, Christopher Riton and uh, Ryan Lumsden was a great experience and it actually helped me going forward to have the confidence to know that I could do it. And um, it was, it was just a great week. Gumberg has work to do to break into the top 20, but prior to Portugal, there were still four events remaining before the grand final. JJ Senecal was in possession of that crucial 20th spot. Hot on his heels, home favorite for the week, Ricardo Gouveia, followed by Nikolai Christensen. Backdrop to the week's drama was Royal Obidos Spa and Golf Resort. A familiar setting, hosting a Challenge Tour event for the fourth time, it was designed by the great man himself, Sevi Ballesteros. The field of 144 would need to have all facets of their game in top shape if they were to tame this track. And so it's over to Kit Alexander, who was keeping an eye on proceedings on day one. Jordan Gumberg had a solid start to his round two pars in the bank before he rolled this one in for his first birdie of the day on the third. Unfortunately, six drop shots in the next three holes for him on the way to a 78. Martin Kuvra with his first round as a pro after winning last week's challenge to Espana as an amateur. He birdied the fifth and would knock that one in for birdie on the seventh and he'd finished two under par. Portugal's Thomas Besser made a stunning start to the week. Six birdies and no drop shots to this point. The 
27-year-old was very much in control of his game. And this beauty set up another red number at the 14th. Former DP World Tour winner Richard Kahlberg started on the 10th. And this brilliant hole-out eagle from the bunker got him to two under par, but he shot 74 after a sloppy finish. Now, Thomas Besser birdied 16. Andy hold this just about at the final hole for a 63, his lowest ever round on the Challenge Tour. It's great. I played. I played amazing the all 18 holes. Uh, make make good putts, make good good swings all around, and I'm very happy with the round uh, that I put. Being my my lowest round ever in my home country just makes it more special. A special situation for the home fans too, with the locals sitting pretty atop the leaderboard after the first round. But would Besser be able to hold on to his advantage in round two, or would the chasing pack? Reel him in. David Boot had a cracking second round. He started on the 10th, and this was his final hole, and it was an eighth birdie of the day. And that was the low round of the day, a 64 to move to minus eight. Manuel Alvira had a 66 in round one. One drop shot today, and five birdies already, having started on the 10th. This set up another birdie for the Spaniard. Marco Penge was coming off of a first round of 65. And he made a positive start with four birdies in his first seven holes. Two birdies, including here at the 10th, and two bogeys on the back nine for him to card a 68. Manuel Elvira, fifth on the road to Mallorca. And he rolled this one in on his final hole for another 66 and a one-shot lead. Feeling very good, you know, I actually came this week without very good feelings on my swing, but I spent a lot of time on the range uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and it seems like it's worked, it worked out very nice. Very nice, something of an understatement. 13 birdies and just one drop shot over two days in Portugal, earning Manuel Elvira top spot at the midway mark of the tournament. Marco Penge came closest to catching the Spaniard with just one shot separating the two of them. Now, sometimes golf can be a family affair. Take, for example, the Hoygaard twins or the Molinari brothers. Well, here in Portugal, it seemed appropriate to get to know the Gouveias. Hey, little brother. What's up, brother? Can I see a few holes? Of course. Let's go for it. Let's see how the course is looking this week. We've always been very good friends. We've always shared a lot with each other. Uh, we didn't always play golf together because uh, I, I played a lot of sports growing up and uh, he did as well, but he chose golf a lot sooner than I did. We are a very sportive uh, family and uh, it's, it's great to, to have him as a brother. Take that. Oh, Ooh. guess who's closer? It's a healthy uh, co competitiveness, you know? It's, it's not like uh, we're trying to kill each other. It's just great to have family around. That's not position A. Position C, <laughs> little brother. Being a bit older, I had a few more years. Tomas, uh, in the beginning, he was more into tennis. And uh, by then, I was really into golf already. I had a, my group of friends. It was great. That's how I fell in love with the game. And, and then Tomas, kind of came after and picked it up a bit later, but he's uh, doing really good at the moment and I'm really proud that he kept going and he, 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 never, he never quit, you know, it's, it's, it's good to have him around. It'd be good if I was a tennis player. Second serve. We are always trying to, to help each other. And uh, I've, I've always admired uh, Ricardo's uh, ball striking, so I've, I've learned a lot from him. And I think he's taken a little bit uh, from me from, for the short game. And I think uh, we complete uh, each other very well. 
I think our, our games uh, match up pretty well. I think we would be a tough foursome, uh, foursome partner to beat. <laughs> Maybe in f future years uh, for the Ryder Cup, who knows? You went for it. Go, go, go. go. Uh, this game is already so lonely by itself. If you can travel with someone and it's a family member, a brother, uh, it's, it's even better. I got a chance. Draw. I got a chance. Draw. I took the chance. He's helping me a lot to, throughout the year and uh, you can ask for a better uh, mentor to get me through Challenge Tour. And, uh, and yeah, it's been amazing. Hopefully he'll graduate to the Deep World Tour and uh, hope to see him there. <laughs> well then. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta give him confidence for the week. I mean, that would be the perfect ending for us. Uh, it's been a, dr a dream of mine to go up to the, to the Deep World Tour. Uh, he's been there and uh, if I go back with him, it would be the perfect ending. I think we're gonna have to measure it. It's very close. His career uh, inspires me because he was, he was a good amateur, uh, but never uh, elite, and then got a lot better in college. And then when he turned pro, he, he just uh, took off and, and uh, you know, made me believe that uh, it was possible and, uh, and uh, that I could do it. So, and then he won, I don't know, six times on, on the Challenge Tour. So uh, that's always inspiring and, uh, you know, that's the, the goal that uh, I'm trying to get at. Oh, if you hang out with us, uh, uh, you'll see that uh, we care a lot about each other and, uh, and we always have each other's back. Thanks for the round. Have a great week. Good luck this week. Play well. Let's have a good sure. week in Portugal. And who knows, we may yet see the brothers Gouveia together at the next level sometime soon. After the break, we'll see if practice made perfect as we dive into day three's action. And we'll find out who reigns supreme in Portugal. See you after the break. Welcome back to the very latest from the Challenge Tour. We're in Portugal at the magnificent Royal Obidos Spa and Golf Resort, though it was a Spaniard in command of proceedings at the midway mark of the tournament. Manuel Elvira was clinging to a slender one-shot advantage heading into moving day. To see how he and his rivals fared, let's rejoin Kit Alexander. Ewan Walker started the week with rounds of 68 and 70. He's made a habit of holing out from off the green this season. He did it once in the Czech Republic and twice in Austria. And got his third round underway by doing exactly that here in Portugal. He would go on to shoot 68. Felix Mori, minus seven coming into the weekend. And he started with a birdie, much to the delight of the pregnant wife, Spenya, watching on. He also shot 68. Marco Penge opened with four pars. This birdie at the fifth took him into the solo lead. Mateusz Gradecki narrowly missed out on promotion to the DP World Tour last season. He was on a brilliant run and hold this for a fifth birdie in eight holes for him to take the outright lead through 14. Andrew Wilson had 68s on Thursday and Friday, two birdies on the way out to get within two of the lead. And he took a step closer to it by holding this at 12. 36 hole leader Manuel Elvira had a horror front nine with four bogeys and just one birdie. This fine approach, though, set up a birdie at 12, and he fought back well for a level par 72. Marco Penge double bogeyed the 11th. 
This one found the bottom of the cup at the par 3 15th, and he would birdie his last four holes for a 69. Wilson birdied 14 and got his fifth birdie of the day at 16 to take the outright lead on 13 under par. Wilson circled another red number at 17 and finished with three birdies on the bounce and seven in total. His 65 was the low round of the day. Manuel Elvira surrendered top spot, slipping into a share of third place. But at this stage, the English duo were dominating. Marco Penge assumed solo second, but it was Andrew Wilson leading with just 18 holes left. And closing in, on a crucial result. The one aim for this week was to win, because I haven't played in Challenge Tour for the most part of this year, and I need to win to like, break into that top 45 or top 70. So, yeah, I need to, I need to win tomorrow, or it's, yeah, they, I need to win. <laughs> Indeed, Wilson has only played once on the Challenge Tour this season. He's languishing down in 208th place on the rankings, but with a win, was projected to rise to 50th. After this week, there would be only two more events before the top 72 move on to China. Thereafter, the top 45 will book their spot at the season-ending Rolex Challenge Tour Grand Final. At this stage, Jack McDonald was safe, but Christopher Broberg and Dominic Foose needed to finish well to force their way onto a plane to China. So there was plenty still at stake. Let's rejoin Kit Alexander one last time then for the final round of the Open de Portugal. Lorenzo Scalise, the Italian, already a winner this year on a challenge tour at the Cascada Golf Challenge in the Czech Republic. And he moves it to 10 under par with a birdie at the opening hole. Wow, look at those flags in the background. The rain coming down as well as Julian Suri plays his approach into the first. That's very nicely played for the man, really looking to reinvigorate his career this season. Suri would make that putt for an opening birdie to apply some pressure to the overnight leader, Andrew Wilson. Both he and Marco Penge made stuttering starts, hitting their tee shots into the water on the third hole opening the door for the chasing pack. That's the recognisable putting stance of Mateusz Grudetsky. Oh, hello. Oh, right in the centre. Brilliant birdie too from the pole. Well, Elvira looking to force his way back into contention. This would get him to 13 under. And in the front door it drops. So that gets him within one of the lead, Andrew Wilson holding it. Now Marco Penge needs to get something going here, one over for his first five holes. His tee shot into the par three sixth. Nice little sawn off follow through in the wind. Oh, and it's an absolute dart. So a fantastic opportunity for the Englishman to get his first birdie of the day. There's Caddy there, Keegan Snalem. He was on the bag of Dan Bradbury when he won the Joburg Open earlier this season. And it is brushed home by Penge to move to minus 14. So he gets alongside compatriot Andrew Wilson at the top. Penge to move to 16 under par. And it was never anywhere else. A brilliant way to start the back nine as that wind tugs away at his shirt and he's opened up a three shot advantage at the top. Ivan Cantero Gutierrez, long eagle try at his final hole of the week. 
Oh, we couldn't. Oh, it rattles the flagstick and drops. He'll finish on 10 under par. Good job it hit the hole. He'd have had a bit of work left for the birdie, but as it is, it's an eagle. And wow, the Spaniard loves that. And Marco Penge still in control of the tournament, despite that bogey on 15. Oh, and that's an aggressive play at 70. Penge would go on to make that putt and get to 16 under. With just one hole remaining, the title was all but his. However, things were also happening up ahead on the 18th. Two brilliant shots for Oli Farr. And he's another to close with an eagle. And that will go some way to repairing the damage of those four bogeys in the previous seven holes. So Penge having hit his nine iron, second shot here on the par five long and into the water. Drop to here, so still with a putter in hand for birdie. Just needs to cozy it down there with a nice comfortable cushion at the top of the leaderboard. Oh, and it's a superb effort. Well, that would have been some way to finish. Jonathan Thompson and Jamie Rutherford watching on. And Penge taps in a maiden challenge tour title and that gets him right into the hunt for promotion to the dp world tour a final round 70 securing a four-stroke triumph for penge in portugal julian surrey and lorenzo scalise came closest to catching the englishman overnight leader andrew wilson battled to a 76 on sunday to finish in a share of fourth but to the winner the spoils I feel like my game's been trending in the right direction for quite a while and I feel like I'm a lot better player this year than I was last year, but the results weren't showing that at the start of the year. Um, and a lot of people kept saying to me, like, it will happen, it will happen. And, you know, you don't win much in golf and when you do, it's not a better feeling. And so to the road to Mallorca rankings, and there's been movement at the summit. Casey Jarvis had held top spot since his win in July in Austria. However, Hugo Cousseau has just snuck ahead of him now. Thanks to his runner-up finish in Portugal, Lorenzo Scalise is up four places to third spot. Lower down, Ivan Cantero Gutierrez was also among those gaining ground. But the biggest climber was Marco Penge, the Englishman leaping 42 spots up to 19th, with Sam Bairstow clinging to that crucial 20th place. And so the curtain comes down on our time in Portugal. Fear not, though, the Challenge Tour Roadshow rumbles on. Up next, we'll see who can rise to the Swiss Challenge. So join us next time as the pursuit for promotion to the DP World Tour continues.